What's going on, everybody? How are you? Happy Friday to you, huh? How about the Phillies? Um, my name is Mark Farzetta. This is a little show we call the Farzy Show. It's uh, presented by the great people at Destination Retirement, DestinationRetirement.com. And I come to you live every day from the Steven Singer Studios. Uh, let me just start off by saying this. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you guys had a better Thursday than I did. <laughs> and I'll get into that in a second. Uh, but, but, but long story short, the uh, Phillies uh, are there for us in times of need. <laughs> and the Phillies in, in the summer, in the dog days of summer, which we are uh, certainly getting into here now that it's June, uh, we need them to carry us through to football season at the very least. Without the Sixers making deep runs into the playoffs and making the finals, without the Flyers doing a lot better than what the Flyers have been doing lately, and of course, without the Philadelphia Eagles, we need the we need the Phillies to bridge the gap. That's the most beautiful time of the year if you're a baseball fan. Me, as I've stated before, big Phillies fan still. I need them to bridge that gap. And the whole city relies on them. The fan base of Philadelphia relies on the Phillies to, to at least carry them through into the Eagles getting things underway. And right now, under Rob Thompson, for and, and a multitude of other reasons, this Phillies team is giving us hope that they will at least give us those meaningful games until the Eagles take that first snap and then beyond. Imagine this, because this is where we're headed. If the Phillies are able to keep any semblance of what they're doing right now, this is where we're headed. If they're able to keep up what they're doing right now, this is very possible. The Eagles will start their season. The Phillies will be in the midst of, at the very least, a wild card race, a playoff race, jockeying for position, for the, uh, the playoffs in Major League Baseball in the National League, and the Eagles will be getting things underway. Imagine this perfect world. Just uh, I, I've told you before about the dark places I go in my mind sometimes as a Philadelphia sports fan. I've told you about them many times. Like, Whoa, good. Oh, so the Flyers, they got a guy named Sergei Bobrovsky, and he wins a Vesna, and he looks amazing, and they go so long without having a goalie, and they had him, and they gave him away. Oh, but right around the corner is Carter Hart, and now he'll be an up-and-coming goaltender, and he'll be amazing. What are the odds of that happening twice in 10 years when it didn't happen for 30 years? That's a dark, that's just an example of the dark recesses of my mind. Now let's get away from that. Now it's happy times. Imagine this happiness. Imagine this euphoria we will experience. They play the first couple of games of the season. The Philadelphia Eagles do. Jalen Hurts looks accurate. A.J. Brown has five touchdowns. (laughs) <laughs> in September, right, in three games. Uh, and Jalen Hurst looks incredible. The defensive line is dominating. The entire defense is dominating. Oh, somehow Jesse Bates is here. Oh, my God, the euphoria. Oh, and by the way, the Phillies are right on the doorstep of the postseason because that's where we're headed. That is the September that I am now envisioning with the hype going into the Eagles after, as Dave Zingaro said yesterday, we've been able to observe two OTAs and the, the, how they look on paper and the way the Phillies have been playing as of late, which is seven straight victories. Oh, oh, and how about this to add to not the euphoria that could be provided in September, but the euphoria that could be uh, provided now. The Phillies winning games and winning seven straight. Nice to see you. Uh, and Adam Sandler making that fine movie, uh, Hustle, which I told you yesterday I loved. And I will pat myself on the back. I in no way, shape, or form gave away spoilers yesterday. No, sir. I did not. But on the show today, Daryl Reynolds, Villanova star, 2016 national champion with Villanova, that Jay Wright fella, when he was wearing them nice suits and all. He'll be on the show today because Daryl Reynolds, I didn't even realize this. I knew that he had a little small part in the movie, Hustle. Uh, I won't say where it is in the in the interview. We don't say where his uh, the, the scene takes place in the movie. We don't, <clears throat> we don't let you know anything. But I, I knew he had a small little cameo in the movie, and I thought that they needed a basketball player, so they threw a jersey on him, and they said, hey, get out there. It, it, what, what did I say yesterday? The city of Philadelphia didn't have a supporting role in the movie. It had a leading role in the movie. And one of the big reasons it had a leading role in the movie was none other than D. Ray himself, Daryl Reynolds, helping make this movie by scouting locations. He's on top of it. He's like, oh, no, no, you guys want to do that? You guys want to do film here? You guys want that scene? You guys want to go film over here? You know what? I haven't been there in a minute. Let me go over there and check it out and see what it's like. He was a film scout for this movie. 
So when you see how pristine and amazing the city of Philadelphia looks, actually, you know what? I'll say this, how authentic these shots of Philadelphia look, look no further than our man D-Ray, who will be joining the show just a little bit. Also, I couldn't, I couldn't go without asking him a, a basketball question, of course. So I asked him a basketball question. And um, I'm not going to say it's a piping hot take, but it's spicy. I will say it's at least a spicy meatball on the future of the 76ers and what D-Ray has to say about this team as currently constructed. There's uh, one star on this team that D-Ray does, just, uh, does, not, he does not have a high opinion of. Let's just say that. Uh, but let's get underway with the Philadelphia Phillies because, folks, if you needed any type of sign to know that the Phillies were just the it team right now, that they got the good mojo right now, that they got uh, the, the burning candles in front of Joe Boo, uh, they, they, they got good old JC hitting curveballs, whatever it might be, you look no further than the fifth inning of yesterday's after yesterday afternoon's game against the Milwaukee Brewers. The Phillies had four outs in that inning. Four outs in that inning. Kyle Schwarber strikes out on a pass ball. He thought he had walked earlier in the at-bat. And I don't know if there's anyone I have seen done this more so than Kyle Schwarber. Thinks a, a ball on the out, you know, on, the, on the, just outside the zone or a ball that's on the corner or whatever is ball four, and he puts his bat down, starts taking the shin guard off, and starts his process to run down the first baseline. And the umpire's like, yeah, by the way, strike. <laughs> So get your ass back in the batter's box. But he does that a lot. There's somebody hitting 209, mm, I don't care how many home runs he's had in those instances, da, 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 da. stay in the box. Anyway, little pet peeve there. Uh, but Kyle Schwarber stays in the box. Ends up swinging and missing on strike three, but the ball gets past the catcher. He trots down the first baseline pretty much with ease because there's no chance they were going to get him at first base. And there you go. Leadoff runner despite striking out on first base. And you think, man, hey, things are going pretty well for the Phillies. Okay. Let's top that. He ends up scoring. It's a 1-1 ball game. At the beginning of the fifth inning, Schwarber takes first on the strikeout. Then he later scores from third on a sacrifice fly by JT Real Muto. At this point, there's two outs in the inning. Uh -huh. Two runners on. D.D. Gregorius steps to the plate. D.D.'s check swing RBI double is a per another perfect example of things just going the way of the Phillies right now. The baseball gods have looked out upon them and said, you know what, let's give you a little bit of a break here. Uh, Brewers are a pretty good baseball team. They had a Cy Young Award winner, the, the reigning Cy Young Award winner on the Hill. Phillies did a phenomenal job of working at bats uh, yesterday. 113 pitches is what Corbin Burns uh, threw yesterday in a four and a third inning uh, performance, appearance, I should say. It was incredible. Phillies kept on working at bats and working at bats and working at bats, and Corbin Burns just, just was burning pitches left and right. The Phillies were able to get, get, run him out of the game in the fifth inning, and they were into the bullpen. So the Phillies did a great job working ABs. So they get him out of the game. Didi Gregoria steps up there in that fifth inning. Check swing. RBI double down the left field line. That's a situation where either he's just swinging and missing that's a situation where that ball is going to go foul. That's an even worse situation where that ball is a line drive out at third base. But for this brand of Philadelphia Phillies baseball, for this Rob Thompson, uh, Bryce Harper led Philadelphia Phillies baseball club, good golly, that is going to go down the left field line and you're going to score a run on that. And Didi Gregorius is going to be standing on second base with a double. How do you know things are going right? Well, that check swing RBI double happened, and you got four outs in the inning. That's how you know things are going right. Oh, that and um, the Phillies just kept, keep on tacking on runs. That's how you know. For instance, what Bryce Harper did in that seventh inning, I believe his home run was in, checks notes, seventh inning, that ball was tattooed to center field. And it's funny because the Arizona Diamondbacks are the next team coming in uh, for, for a series, and the Phillies are hoping to sweep that series as well. But their stadium and uh, the uh, the Milwaukee Brewers stadium are, are similar in this regard. When you hit a bomb to center field, like you never really know how far it's going to go because they just got a big, huge wall up there pretty much. And Bryce Harper, sometimes, man, you're watching the game and you just see that contact at home plate and you go, oh, God. Like, where's, like, you just look at it and go, oh, wow, where's this, whoa, where's this ball going to end up? Bryce Harper, in that violent swing, tattooed that baseball 
just it obliterated that baseball to center field. Somehow, magically, it's only 425 feet. That ball probably would end up going 500 feet. He blasted that ball to deep center field to keep adding on runs. Then later in the ball game, the Kyle Schwarber stepping up there. By the way, that was fifteenth home run of the season uh, for Bryce Harper. Then Kyle Schwarber steps up in the eighth inning. He hits another home run, a two-run home run to make it six to two. And then Abdul Herrera caps things off with yet another two-run home run. This time Bryce Harper was on uh, was on base, and the Phillies end up locking up an eight to three victory just like that. How do you know things are going the Phillies' way? Yesterday is a perfect example of that. It's a tight ball game going into that fifth inning, 1-1, and then for the rest of the way, it was pretty much all Phillies after that. Uh, Zach Eflin was right there keeping on par, pitching himself out of jams. He was right there uh, on par pretty much with uh, uh, Corbin Burns. Uh, He had 96 pitches through four innings of work, allowed one run on four hits. uh, Burns, as I said, four and a third, three runs uh, on – one of them was earned uh, on (laughs) – Wow, four walks. I didn't realize that during the game yesterday. But, yeah, another example of them working at bats. But uh, one hell of an outing uh, for the Phillies in general. And after the game, Rob Thompson was just talking about uh, how they got this win uh, in their back pocket because it's yet another sweep for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's Thompson, uh, the new manager of the Phillies, set, uh, 6-0 and as a Phillies skipper on the win. Yeah, they're playing well. You know, we're getting good pitching. Eflin today didn't really have his – the normal command that he normally has, but he really grinded through it and, and um, got out of some tough situations. And, uh, and then the bullpen did a great job all the way through. You know, Renfro, he, he jumped uh, first pitch of the inning on Brogdon, but other than that, those guys, those guys did great. For for me, I'm just continuously blown away at how relaxed this team is. Uh, it, it really, and you ask the manager about it. Everyone's talking about him. Everybody's talking about Rob Thompson as being, you know, the difference maker on this team. And they ask him about sweeps, and he goes, well, yeah, they're playing great. And I don't expect him to go, well, I'm a pretty damn good interim manager. Like, I'm not expecting that. But the, just to continue to put the focus on the players and talk about guys like, Bryce Harper, talk about how well his bullpen played, talk about or pitched, how, how well his uh, starting pitcher uh, battled in that game. Zach Evans didn't have his best stuff, but he battled through four innings, right? Like, all that stuff, it's a good. It's what a good manager will do. And I think what Rob Thompson has done is just, it, he's done everything that you have heard to this point already. And just yesterday is another example of it. Guys aren't pressing. Like, they come out yesterday. Here's another example. We could talk about, you know, Bryson Stott looking more relaxed when he's out there. We could talk about Bryce Harper taking over the, the, you know, the team taking on the personality of Bryce Harper more so than anything. We could talk about all that. But really, what I think people need to focus on is the fact that they they started out this ball game yesterday something ridiculous with runners, runners in scoring position. Like one for seven, one for eight, whatever it was. And then later in the ball game, they're just tattooing baseballs to get runs across the plate. And it wasn't a matter of them pressing. It was a matter of them letting the game come to them. They had a, they had a great strategy going into the game. Hey, work at bats against Burns, get him out of this game, get to the bullpen, get out of the side, you know, get out of the reigning Cy Young Award winners way for the most part. And let's get to that bullpen. Get him out of our way. With 114 pitches. Yeah, you pretty much did that. <laughs> and then they just let the game come to them. You see Schwarber work that strikeout, gets the first base. Okay, all right, see what we can do with this. He gets around a, th- a third, scores in the sack fly. This, the, the the check swing RBI double that I mentioned from D.D. Gregorius. Just these things started falling into place for the Phillies. They got breaks. You didn't see anybody start pressing. You saw guys go out there and make things happen. And when you get three home runs in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning of this ball game. Yeah, it lets you know that you're going to continue to tack on runs and really take away any sense of hope for the other team to come back in the game. So that was spectacular yesterday. The Phillies, hopefully, will just continue to see that happen as they uh, come up now against the uh, uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, who, as I said earlier, aren't really playing too well. Now, the Phillies, keep in mind, are now one game under 500. They haven't been uh, at 500 for weeks now. The Arizona Diamondbacks are coming to town. Uh, for this game tonight, uh, Zach Gallon will get the start against Kyle Gibson. Uh, 7.05 start time tonight. I really enjoy those 6.45 start times. I'm a big fan of them. Got to admit, perhaps it's my old age. Um, 
speaking of old age, we'll get there in a second. Uh, but the uh, Diamondbacks coming to town in a similar boat to the Phillies, 28 and 31 on the season. The schedule gets easier. You've heard that uh, a million times uh, from a lot of people that uh, Joe Girardi was facing the tough part of the schedule. Now Thompson gets to take over when the easier part of the schedule comes around. But as I'll always say to that, and I've, I've said it during the latter part of the Eagle season last year, when everyone was talking about how the schedule gets a lot easier, and, you know, they'll, work them, they'll, work, they'll work their way into the playoffs. Yes, I was hopeful for that. Yes, I was optimistic for that. But don't be one of those teams that other teams are looking forward to playing, saying, oh, well, they're terrible, so you know that's an easy win. Don't be one of those teams. And the way the season was going, it certainly looked like the Phillies were going to be one of those teams. And as we had said, the Phillies were finding ways to lose baseball games. Now they are finding ways to win baseball games, and ultimately that's what good teams do. But now the Phillies got the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Miami Marlins. Then they got a long five-game series at Washington, with the Nationals, and then they got a two-game set in Texas with the Ra- uh, with the Rangers. Then they go to San Diego to take on the Padres for a four-game series. That's pretty much the next month, almost, of the Phillies season. So against the Diamondbacks, Miami, and Washington, those are teams that aren't exactly doing really well. One of the things that we always worry about, especially when they play against a team like the Miami Marlins, because they've had their number over the last couple of years, is that they play down to their opponents. Bryce Harper, the man who I have said and said yesterday, that this isn't just Bryce Harper's team. This is Bryce Harper's franchise now. They are taking on the personality of their leader, Bryce Harper, on not looking past any opponents that are on the list right now, on the schedule from this point on. Yeah, I mean, they're still major league baseball teams, right? Um, but we got to take care of business. we got to go in and, and take it one game at a time, one pitch at a time, and we can't overlook anybody that we play. Um, we got to continue to, to grind each bat out, um, no matter the score, no matter the situation, or anything like that, you know. Um, so I think just as a team, we just got to keep going, um, doing things we're doing, you know, playing the game the right way. Um, and like I said, not overlook anybody that we play and just take it one game at a time and win series, um, you know, and get the sweeps when we can. Let the sweeps come. That's it. Just let them on down. Keep the brooms handy. And let's just keep on party and keep this going for as long as humanly possible. Good vibes are happening in Philadelphia, and we can all be excited about it thanks to the Philadelphia Phillies. And I think thanks uh, most notably uh, for Phillies' ownership, Phillies' front office, Dave Dombrowski finally making the change, Bryce Harper being right up there, right there to pick up the pieces <laughs> and keep this team moving forward. And let's just see how long they can ride this wave. Uh, before we get to uh, Daryl Reynolds, I do want to tell you, uh, do we got – I, I, we have uh, medical people, right? Uh, we have medical people in our uh, chat, if I'm not mistaken. I had to uh, uh, do get some blood work done, typical stuff, nothing worth bragging about. And um, I don't have a problem with needles, okay? I have a problem with giving blood. But uh, the nurse I had yesterday, and I'm, I'm putting this out for help to see if anyone else has the same problem. I don't have a problem with needles. I, I got the, the vaccine, I got the booster, I, you know, the, all the shots I've gotten in my life, whatever. Never a problem with needles. Yesterday, I had to give blood, and the nurse hit the, the she missed. <laughs> she, Whoops, I missed, is what I heard. And I was like, oh, she missed, okay. Uh, and I'm like, all right, fine. And um, I, from what I understand, I didn't lose any blood. They patched it up, right, patched it up. Like it was, like she had a welder's helmet on. She's like, I got this, and, you know. Uh, before I understand, I lost like a drop, you know. And I tell, I go, hey, just to let you know, I'm feeling really lightheaded. And she goes, uh, oh, okay. And she moves around to uh, get my other hand, and she goes, uh, hey, um, let me, let let me try this. Next thing I know, I'm on a gurney, and there's four people around me trying to wake me up, and I that's never happened before. If I gave blood in a blood drive in uh, high school or whatever, I would pass out. But from blood loss, not from like, oh, a needle, huh? and I'm like, I pass out. I don't. I can stare at a a, a needle. I can stare at a with an IV. I can stare at any of that stuff all day long and not get nauseous or anything like that, even if it's happening to me. But for whatever reason, bang, my wife's like, you're you're probably dehydrated, and I'm like, oh, that's a possibility. Uh, but is, does anyone else have the same problem? It's not looking at the needle. It's not anything like that. It doesn't like get it in my head or anything physically just like, um, Hey, just to let you know, I'm getting lightheaded. And then it was, uh, 
four people around me. He's back. It's first thing I remember. <laughs> first thing. First thing I remember. He's back. And I'm like, ah, oh, hey guys, <laughs> nice to see you again. Um, does that happen to anybody else? That happened to me yesterday. And uh, I was like, I really want to be on my sofa right now, and I need to get home and watch the Phillies. <laughs> that's that's what I remember thinking. Again, it was just typical blood work, change family doctors and whatever. Um, so uh, don't worry about me. But I do want to ask that question. Does that happen to anybody else? It's not, like, you can stare at a needle. Like, I can watch, like, you know, th- if there was a surgery channel, I could watch that. I told you guys I watch Meat Eater. All right, it's a hunting show. Best way I talk about it, it's 20 minutes of a hunting show and five minutes of a cooking show. I don't have a problem with any of that stuff. Visually, I don't have a problem with it. I've gotten plenty of shots before, no problem. Anything where I have to give blood, there's a 90% chance that I'm going to pass out. But this is before any blood happened. The hell, man? Is it just me getting older? Or is it dehydrated? I asked my medical professionals in the chat check. We'll get to you guys a little bit later. But you know what? Let me tell you guys right now about a a financial professional. Mike Seibert, the Destination Retirement. DestinationRetirement.com. Uh, Mike Sabbard is a retirement income certified professional at Destination Retirement LLC and a partner of 1847 Financial and an advisor for Eagles, Sixers, and Phillies fans only. And maybe next year, the Flyers, of course. Well, when it comes to long-term savings, why are you giving up the current enjoyment of your income? The answer is to have income streams in retirement. It only makes sense then to understand how income, uh, how retirement income streams work so that you can direct savings in ways that give you the highest income when you retire. Think of it like climbing a mountain. Is the objective to get to the top of the mountain or is the objective to get back down the mountain safely? We'll talk to Mike Seibert about how you can do all this because he'll discuss with you your different phases of your financial life. Going up a mountain, for instance, like climbing a mountain, going up the mountain is your accumulation years. Going down the mountain is your distribution years. That's what it's like. Talk to my friend Mike Seibert at DestinationRetirement.com. Let him show you an efficient way to pay for your kid's college education and still retire on your own terms. Your first step is to avoid starting your growth cycle over again by depleting accounts like 529s for big expenses like college. You don't want to lose your position on your growth cycle and have to start over. You can't get that time back. Instead, set yourself up with the ability to use vehicles that you can take money out of without starting your growth cycle over again. Find out how your annual retirement savings can help your college savings and how your annual reti- or college savings can help your retirement savings. Mike will show you your own portal and set it up for you in Retirement Analyzer, then use the software to help you navigate through your different phases of your financial life. For questions or to set up a meeting with Mike, you can email him at gobirds at 1847financial.com. That's gobirds at 1847financial.com or call his office at 484-275-6035. That's 484-275-6035. You can also visit his website at destinationretirement.com. And as always, go birds, ladies and gentlemen. How about Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelers, the other corner of 8th and Walnut, right there on Jewelers Row in Philadelphia. For over 40 years, my man Steven Singer has been in the love business in Philadelphia. That's what he loves to tell you. He's in the love business. Looking to get engaged, looking to give that special someone in your life a special present that dies, d- 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 a <laughs> dazzling diamond. That's how you say that. Look no further than Steven Singer Jewelers. A lot of people, they look at it like all this pressure is going to be on them because not only do they have to pick out the right gift, they got to be able to haggle and negotiate and all that stuff. No, no, no. The person, first off, you're getting a beautiful quality diamond from Steven Singer Jewelers. And second, there's no pressure involved. Because you know when you walk in there, you're getting the perfect price. Comparing to other jewelers that mark them, uh, things way up, Stephen marks them way down. Just so you know, you're getting the deal when you walk in the door. It's very simple. He calls it the perfect price guarantee. And that's what you get every day at Stephen Singer Jewelers. So you don't have to run in there with some promo code or some coupon or, hey, was the sale today? Ah, sale was yesterday. No, the sale is always going on because the perfect price guarantee from Stephen Singer Jewelers. I, ladies and gentlemen, I send my friends and family to Steven Singer Jeweler. I go to Steven Singer Jewelers. I love the guy. It pains me to say I hate Steven Singer Jeweler, uh, Steven Singer. But guess what? I don't. I love the guy. Other jewelers may say they hate the guy. Uh, people that don't want to buy that diamond because it's so difficult, I hate Steven Singer because he makes it so easy to buy a diamond. Do what I do. Go to the other corner of 8th and Walnut or all online at IHateStevenSinger.com. That's IHateStevenSinger.com. Don't forget about a free uh, always at Steven Singer Jewelers. Don't forget about the uh, lifetime guarantee as well. Steven Singer Jewelers, one place, one price, the perfect price every day online at IHateStevenSinger.com. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to get an interesting Sixers opinion at the end of this conversation. 
And on top of that, we're going to get some uh, great conversation about the movie Hustle. If you haven't seen it, make sure you do. I absolutely loved it. I, as I said yesterday, I thought for a second, is this movie just for Philadelphia? Like, they want to show this movie to other people, right, that, that are not from Philadelphia, that are not Sixers fans, right, that aren't even, like, NBA fans. Right? Uh, but I absolutely loved it. And a guy who has a role in the movie and a guy that uh, was apparently a scout in the movie tells us all the things he did for it from uh, Villanova fame, from Lower Marion fame, our man Daryl Reynolds joins the show right now on the Rough North Peaks guest line. Right now on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line, you might say, oh, this is Daryl Reynolds. Oh, okay. Uh, national champion, Villanova, 2016. That was cool. Well, how about this? Movie star, Daryl <laughs> Reynolds. I, Darryl, I, D. Ray, I went on uh, a rant yesterday uh, about the, sh- the movie Hustle, and mm-hmm. I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I forgot that you had a small part in it, but a part nonetheless. And uh, your, your scene, I don't want to say when it is in the movie. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. No spoilers. But uh, you make a cameo appearance, uh, if you will. And uh, I, I, how did this come about? How did you get involved in this? I know you're in filmmaking, but how did you get involved in this particular movie? Um, I, a friend of mine uh, was connected to somebody in the, the casting process. And they first brought me on to help with camera testing and like which areas in Philly they wanted to go to. So I was low key like a scout, like, all right, this park looks good. Um, This looks good. These, how the team should be like put together. They had me doing a lot of behind the camera stuff. And then they were just like, you know, you around these dates. I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. So I get there and I'm like, all right, what role am I playing? They're like 76er and I'm just like, okay. (laughs) Okay, like I, I get it. This, this, this is hilarious. And they gave my number too. I, I was so happy, but it was just like, all right, okay. <laughs> well, here it is. You posted a picture uh, on your uh, Instagram account account with Adam Sandler, which is a great picture. Uh, I have heard he is one of the. Oh, look, I don't know anything about Hollywood, but I just I watch interviews and stuff and. Uh, I always grew up like watching Letterman and Leno, all those guys. Well, not Leno, but Letterman and all the people talking about working with Adam Sandler is so great. What was it like getting a little time with Adam Sandler? He's the nicest dude, man. Most down to earth dude. Um, I don't know if it was like method acting because his character in the movie is just stressed out, but he was always tired. So either he just doesn't sleep or like he was just staying in character. But every time we see him, like, what's up, man? What's up? How you doing? He was like, tired. Like every time, like every time he saw us, but he was he was always high spirited and just a very genuine dude. Mm-hmm. I, I will say this much: when I mean, obviously, you got the uniform in, so people can you know can uh, you know people can put it together. You you, uh, you play a seventy sixer. It's not like you're going to the park as a seventy sixer. You're going to the Wells Fargo Center as a seventy sixer. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it like for you, as someone who has played in that stadium, someone who obviously has? heard crowds erupt when you do well what was it like to do all that while having that jersey on with a packed wells fargo center it was dope it was it was kind of surreal because like uh the way they would have like the crowd queued up and to hear the the cheering go on and off um but for me i just like you said i'm in film i love being on set and seeing how it came together i'm gonna just spoil it it wasn't packed that is the, <laughs> that is the magic of movies it was not <laughs> But they framed the hell out of it. it. It looks packed in that scene. I was like, oh, this is how it happens. Okay. 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 That's insane. Uh, so uh, you, you, uh, you're you scouting, you're doing all this stuff, and then finally they say, hey, you know what? We could use you to actually play the role of a basketball player. Did they? Did they did I assume they knew your background, or did they just think they struck it rich with you? No, 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 no. They knew my background. They knew my background. I, I had helped out with something. They've been shooting this for a while. I helped out with something. If it was 2021, they shot it. I helped out with something in 2020 like during the pandemic. And they knew that I, you know, I played ball. Um, but I was I was happy with it. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to be in it. I ain't, I ain't going to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I just want to be behind the scenes. But no, I wanted a part. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> wanted a part. They, they, I, I was trying to, I was like going to be the first extra that snuck in the line. Like, you see my shit in the subtitles. <laughs> But um, but no. Once we got on set, they were just like, "Oh no, this is this is this might work." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that, now, as someone who's a filmmaker, what did you take away from it from that aspect? I mean, you said how you put it all together, how they mm-hmm. put it all together, how they, the movie magic they waved that wand. What did you take away from it for someone who wants to be uh, making more movies? Uh, I mean, to be honest, this this sucks to say in a way. I 
that was the thing that was like, oh, I have to go to LA. Like, I have to. Like, I didn't know anything. It's so many things that go into making a movie. Like, like you said, that Wells Fargo scene. Although the arena wasn't packed, like the floor was with how many people had different jobs. The amount of times we had, they had one scene they had me dunking. I had to do it like 20 times. I was just like, damn, like it's so much that goes into this. I was like, all right, I need to move to LA and figure out how this happens on a regular basis. This shit is crazy. <laughs> um, I, 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 spoiler for some people, my brother is one of the extras at hey. the Wells Fargo Center. Yeah. So if you see a, <laughs> if you see a taller, less handsome version of me, that's my brother. Um, but he, he had said that it was just, you know, an incredible experience and, Everything like you just said, you go and dunk a basketball. It's like, no, wait, lighting wasn't right. Let's yeah. stop down, do this again, and everything, different angles, of course. All of that are things that you gotta sit through as an extra or anyone with a small part in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 tedious. But it was fun. I mean, and they were great. I, I don't know who exactly your brother was, but everybody in that crowd, like <laughs> every time that energy was at the same point. So like I said, it was it was just a dope experience. And like the fact that the, the crew was so nice and just so easy to work with made it easier. But for me, I'm like, like a kid in a candy store. Like, oh my God, all this shit is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. What was, I'll ask you this general question. What was the best part of the whole experience for you? Um, We were at the, we had a scene where we we're at the practice facility for the Sixers, um, the one right over the water. And I want to say we had like four or five hours between like shoot, like, like scenes we had to shoot. We ended up playing like three on three. So we're just like in the, we're in the last time I was in there was when I was with the, the summer league team. So like, I was like, this is dope. But like, it, it, it was so much less serious. It was just like, all right, let's just, let's just hoop. Let's just hoop. We're playing like three on three, four on four, four court for like hours while they're shooting the scene in the other building. And then we had now unsweaty for the next one it was weird but <laughs> <laughs> now who can can you can you say who was playing was it was like tobias harris and maxi and thibel and those guys oh, what was no, going no, on they no 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 they they kept them on ice oh my god they started to dribble too much somebody would come over you know how it is somebody up top you know whistles or does some type of noise everybody looks up and it's a and they just kind of just are, you know what I mean? Like, they were like the kids that were on punishment low-key. Like, we were the ones outside. Like, come on, let your mom, you know what I mean? Your mom said you can go a little bit further than the, the street. Like, man, come on. They're like, nah, I'm under contract, chilling. <laughs> That's amazing. I can picture that. <laughs> no, you can go past the street. Like, That's a, such a great analogy. No, the bell was ringing. I got to go home and eat dinner. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's, ins that's insane. So uh, the move out to L.A. now. Mm -hmm. I've I've spent a couple I've spent like a day and a half in Los Angeles. Um, I was out there covering a football game, and the the vibe is totally different. What is different? What stood out to you between Los Angeles and Philadelphia in terms of uh, culture, attitude overall of its citizens? What's the biggest difference here? And don't say the weather and the palm yeah. trees. None of the none of the stuff I'll be jealous of. That's a cop out. That's a cop out. Um, right. I. What took me off guard here is I was in a taco shop. Uh, um, and you know, there's like a million of them. I, I think there's more taco shops than, than like people out here. Like there's like, for every one, <laughs> cat, there's like five taco shops. But I'm in one and somebody just walks up to me and starts talking. And the Philadelphian in me like immediately, like in like, I didn't do it physically, but in my soul, I like squared up. Like what the hell is about to happen? Like what are we about to get into now? I realized, like, oh, people out here are just more friendly. They they are a lot more friendly. I'm not going to lie. It's taken me a while to get used to people just walking up and, you know, starting to chit-chat with you. But out here, they're just – it's such a – because you can't get anything done on your own um, and because people are just – I'm just going to call it what it is – in a better mood, they are a lot more likely to walk up to you and just start rapping. So <laughs> that was like the I'm not in Kansas anymore moment because I was just like – like the way I turned around, like when I heard somebody behind me say something, I was like thinking I'm about to turn into a fist or some shit. And, and it was just like <laughs> the happiest little guy just wondering what I did for a living. I was like, okay, okay. It's uh, I, my my go to is always what is this guy trying to sell me? What 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 is yeah. he trying to sell me? Yeah, 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 is yeah, he, yeah, yeah. We're just on guard as Philadelphians. Like I, I think it's just, we just we're, we're on a natural defense, and I was like, all right, I don't I don't need it out here. But yeah, 
Yeah, you just got to crack through the shell first. And then we're, we're, then we're soft as pudding. Anyway, uh, 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 so I just want to ask you one basketball question here because you know, we're, we're looking at the 76ers offseason. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is uh, involved in rumors, nothing substantial. Matisse Thibel involved in rumors right now, nothing substantial. There's names being floated out there like Zach Levine, Bradley Beal uh, being added to the James Harden and Joel Embiid 76ers. What do you see them doing by the time this offseason ends? Uh, I'm gonna call it what it is. I I see. I see two steps forward and one back, which is progress nonetheless. But I gotta be honest. Until they get rid of James Harden, I kind of don't want to hear anything. Wow! Wow! I, I'll be the. I'm not the first to say it. Um, because you get on Twitter, you'll see it. I to me, I put James Harden in the same folder as uh Carmelo Anthony. He's very interesting, very interesting the first 82 games of the season. But for some reason, when April comes and those commercials flip over in the playoffs, I don't know what happens. Like, he just – i he's not a winner. He's not a winner in my opinion. He's a, he's an entertainer. Um, but just watching that, that, that last series unfold, watching those little riffs with him and Maxi on the bench. And I love Maxi. You know what I mean? Like, he, you can tell he's a genuinely hardworking kid, genuine mm-hmm. kid. Like, he's a, he's a decent dude. Um, I, I see that Carmelo effect, like kind of how we know when they when they brought Carmelo over to the Knicks when they had Amari Stoudemire and Raymond Felton of all people doing great, and um and then they brought him in. It was like there's something, you know what I mean? You don't mix these things like chicken and pork. You don't mix these two together. And just James, <laughs> Hall- no, no. I, I think they're gonna make a good move, but if they keep him, to me, like I said, that's that's the one step back. All right, hold on. Chicken and pork. I haven't heard that one. I'll write that down. Um, <laughs> hey, you know what? I just want to clarify one thing. So you weren't playing with Tyrese Maxey. You weren't playing with Tobias Harris. Who were you playing with on set of Hustle? Oh, my God. The other extras and, and people who were, like, in that huddle, like, in the film. Like, we were, okay. like, the day in Wells Fargo, we were having, like, a half-court shooting contest between scenes and stuff like that. Like, but we would just start playing. Yeah, it's a hoop. It's a ball. It's like, yo, we all got our sneaks on. Let's just play. But they were very adamant. Like, I remember at one point, because uh, you know Seth was still on the team, he was at Wells Fargo, and he started to he started to shoot a little bit and started to get a little active. And like I said, that hey, bring it back in. Let's get close to the stoop. <laughs> like say you can stay on the stoop, but do not venture off. <laughs> we ain't get stay on. The- <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, D Ray. I couldn't be more happy for you, man. It's such a such a, so great to see you in the movie. And, and again, we're not nothing. We're not giving anything away. We're not giving anything away, uh, but uh, I'll just say you were great in it. There you go. Uh, 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 D-Ray, what are you working on now, man? Just going out there and making movie magic? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm learning, man. I'm learning. There's a lot of – I've been doing a lot of interviews. Um, so I'm out here. I'm, I'm working for a company within this Web3 space. So, you know, this thing is all over the place. The NFT and, and, and crypto world is crazy. But I've been doing a lot of interviews, putting together stories. Um, and then doing a lot of like just behind the scenes work of trying to figure out how things go, getting on every set that I can. I was on a set for a TV drama, um, not too long ago. Like I'm talking like, like so proper, not like law and order, like, like gas, quick zoom in, like, you know, ABC, <laughs> your grandma twist at like 11 a.m. That, that shit that comes on like at 11 a.m. Um, <laughs> that type TV, but just learning how it works. I'm, I'm, I'm low key back in school out here. I'm oh here. man. That's great. Hey, man, it's just super duper grad school. That's all it is, man. Good for you. Uh, that's great. Daryl Reynolds, make sure you guys are following my man. You know, here's his Instagram uh, picture again. Uh, so make sure you guys are checking him out on all the social media platforms, uh, including his new best friend, uh, Adam Sandler. Uh, so uh, you, know, you guys will be hanging out all the time. Is, is it coming up? It's not coming. There it is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, r- yeah. Ray the director, R-E-Y, Ray the director. Give him a follow on Insta. D-Ray, thank you so much, brother. Always great catching up with you. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. The great Daryl Reynolds joining us on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line. That's uh, that's chicken and pork, folks. Chicken and pork. I'm not against it. I would, I would try it, uh, but uh, chicken and pork. All right. So there you go. How about D-Ray? First off, credit to him. Anything you saw... In the movie Hustle, that was Philadelphia-based. D-Ray, baby. D-Ray. 
Um, and then secondly, how about the take on James Harden? Like, don't even waste my time with James Harden anymore, according to D-Ray. Uh, the guy's not a winner. I, I mean, the evidence is there to support his argument. The saving grace in all this is that he takes a step back. Joel Embiid is still the star of the team. He's the go-to guy. And they add somebody else to be the second-tier guy. I remember, and this is what it got me thinking about yesterday when we were done the interview. I remember going into the James Harden trade, like before the, 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 you know, the deal was made. I remember saying, I need somebody to come in here and almost challenge Joel Embiid for the leading scorer on this team. I, I needed somebody to come in here and be a tier between Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris. That's what I needed him to be. Then it kind of morphed into, I needed somebody to be a tier between Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Now I think what we need is somebody to be a tier between Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid because James Harden ain't that guy. I need James Harden to be a facilitator for Joel Embiid, somebody right there in the middle, and then Tyrese Maxey. That's what I think the Sixers team needs. Now, who is that guy? We, we've we mentioned uh, Bradley Beal 100 times. We've, we've mentioned Zach Levine 100 times. When we had Michael KB on while I was on vacation and we aired that interview, Michael KB said, if you're looking at either of those two players, you got to assume Tyrese Maxey is going to be part of that deal. I'm not doing that deal. I think Tyrese Maxey is very close to being a, a huge deal in the NBA. I'm not just giving that up. If this was the step he could take forward, like, you know what we talk about a lot? We talk about Jalen Hurts in his third, in his second year as the Eagles starting quarterback. We don't even talk about his rookie year where he got a, a four starts under his belt. Oh, this is what he can do when he really takes the reins. How good can he be? Well, this was Tyrese Maxey's first year as a starter for the Sixers. And look what he did. Look how much improvement he showed from the start of the season to the end of the season. Look how much more confidence he gained. I remember him just trying to look like a guy who belonged in the NBA. This is this year now. And we watched him mature. We watched him improve. Joel Embiid goes out with injury. Tyrese Maxey takes over as the team's leading scorer. Uh, Joel Embiid goes out with COVID, comes back. Maxey then has to get through the hump again of learning that he could play that well and with that much confidence with Joel Embiid in the lineup. And he does that. They go get James Harden. Things kind of go amazing for a second. And then they kind of come back down to earth. But Tyrese Maxey definitely has it in him to be a star in this league. He's not a star yet because he still has to make his name known throughout the rest of the NBA. Right now, they look at the Sixers, they look at Joel Embiid, they look at James Harden because of the names that are there. For Joel Embiid's case, it's, it's talent and a name. Tyrese Maxey's got the talent. I think in his second year as a starter for the 76ers, he'll put an exclamation point on his reputation in the NBA. Now it's going to be up to Daryl Morey to see if he can add to what he has without subtracting too much. You have that uh, the, the, that uh, moniker as a great GM. You have the description as a great GM. Look at all the the deals that he's made and how many times they've made it. You know, did, it was, you know, into the playoffs with James Harden and the Houston Rockets, and he was able to do with Houston and trading for James Harden, getting that superstar piece. And now we have the back end of his career, James Harden, which I think we can all acknowledge, regardless of a hamstring injury, is not going to be what we saw in Houston. What we need is for Daryl Morey to go out there and not overpay for talent. We need Daryl Morey to go out there and fleece somebody somehow magically. I don't see how he does it. I don't see how this team gets insanely better by not giving up a lot. Your your biggest trade piece is going to be a guy who is almost starring in the movie Hustle, which is Tobias Harris, which most of you know by now. So for me, I think it comes down to Daryl Morey having to fleece somebody. And that's easier said than done, as we all know. And I think every fan base is waiting for their GM to, to, to fleece somebody. Well, guess what? Not every franchise has Daryl Morey, great GM, great executive. Not every franchise already has Joel Embiid. So let's just start right there. And also, not every franchise has gone through the suffering that Philadelphia 76ers fans have gone through in recent years. Starting with the process to right now, not making out a second round of the playoffs, having two number one overall picks no longer be on the roster. For whatever reason, things just not working out here in Philadelphia. Meanwhile, you watch the Bucks go through their own process and win a championship. Then you watch the Boston Celtics now on the verge of going to a championship, possibly. 
it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Daryl Moore needs to go out there and flee somebody to have any chance of making it all worth it. Either that or just Tyrese Maxey becomes a perennial all-star and becomes that scorer between James Harden and Joel Embiid. I already think he can do it. It's a matter of whether or not he can do it consistently. And hey, you get that type of defensive effort from Tobias Harris for the rest of the next season if he's here? Yeah, good things will happen. A little offense to throw in there as well. Three and D guy, praise. Yeah, okay, please. Let's see how he does. Uh, thanks to D-Ray for joining us there on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line. Let me tell you about Rothman Orthopedics, ladies and gentlemen. Remember the old you? The one that didn't have to put up with a fickle knee, a finicky hip, or a shoulder that no longer does what the shoulder should do? Well, the Rothman Approach to Orthopedics is here to get you back to being you. Back to running, back to working, back to walking, back to playing, back to living your life the way you want. With same-day appointments available, you can start at RothmanOrtho.com. We can start right now, RothmanOrtho.com. Same-day appointments. So go to RothmanOrtho.com to finally get that, that knee looked at, that finicky hip looked at, that shoulder that's been bugging you. RothmanOrtho.com, the official orthopedic partner of your Phillies, Eagles, and Sixers. Go to RothmanOrtho.com. How about the people at Versus Game? Been showing you this logo. If you haven't seen it, check it out one more time and hop on the Versus Game app right now and look up the Farsi Show and answer the question, do you think the Flyers will still have their fifth overall pick by Sunday at 11.59 p.m.? Rumors out there about them potentially shopping that pick? They might make a deal by Sunday, yes or no. Yes, they'll have their fifth overall pick. No, they won't have their fifth overall pick. Very simple in the versus game app. You know why? Because it's always binary. It's always yes or no. It's always this or that. So go to the App Store, go to the Google Play Store, download the versus game app to your phone right now, follow at Farzy Show, follow other hosts on that uh, app as well, and let the games begin. Always binary, always yes or no, always this or that, and you can always win yourself some cash as well. Who doesn't want that? It's just that simple. Versus game. Have yourself an awesome time with versus game. How about the people at Freestone Farms CBD? Speaking of an awesome time, uh, freestonefarmcbd.com. Check it out for yourself. You like CBD? Huh? How about 20% off that CBD at freestonefarmcbd.com? When you use promo code FARZY, you'll love it. Check out their menu. It's something you absolutely will be wowed with. With strains like their insane tropical tasting Bayox that clocks in at a chart topping 24.1% and a super CB- CBD, which is half Hindu Kush. And 21%. These genetics, whew, they're fantastic. It doesn't get any better than this. And they grow all their premium hemp flower in the Garden State with all organic inputs and IPM. There's absolutely nothing synthetic from farm to jar. And after har- harvest, they uh, carefully preserve all the plant compounds with a perfect three-month cure. Just one look or smell, and you'll know it's CBD done right. And that this product is great for anyone looking to take a more natural approach to everything that they put in their bodies. Ah, and how about this? 20% off. Did I mention that? <laughs> yes, I did. 20% off CBD. When you use promo code FARZY, 20% off at checkout. That's promo code FARZY at freestonefarmcbd.com. Freestonefarmscbd.com. How about PHL Sports Nation, Philadelphia Sports Nation, enhancing your Philadelphia sports fan experience across all social media and blogs? That's phlsportsnation.com. Now it's time for the chat check, ladies and gentlemen. I know everyone's favorite part of the show. Welcome in. Welcome in. Kevin, consistent leadoff hitter. Always number one right there with the hello. Kevin, nice to see you, buddy. Oh, one guapo. What's up, guapo? How you doing, pal? Good morning to you. Sean Gillespie, good morning. Dan Schwartz, whoa, good morning. Red October? I'll wait until they're over 500, but loving it. Daniel, Daniel, are you being part of the fun police? Are you? Wait till they're over 500. Why, I ought to. Um, one game under 500. Two wins over 500. The Arizona Diamondbacks come to town. And uh, tell, you, tell you something about those uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, not a very good baseball team. Not a very good baseball team. Uh, three games under 500. So they're uh, right around there with the Phillies. they just coming off a, a series split with a four-game series with the Reds. Uh, they're going to have Gallon on the Hill tonight, <clears throat> so we'll see how that uh, shakes out, and we'll get more into that in our morning rush segment now that I'm more than curious. Uh, Mally, what's going on, Mally? Good morning. Uh, Louie! Louie! I like a Louie. How you doing, Louie? Uh, bullpen uh, look good, bats are hot. When's the last time we got to say that? 
on a consistent basis. Bullpen look good. Yeah, they uh I like it a bullpen. The bullpen's nice. Uh so Louie, welcome to the chat. I don't believe I've seen you in here before. Uh Dan Schwartz. Damn! Look at that shirt. That's a crisp blue, long sleeve, snug beauty. <laughs> Almost just want to talk about that. Just kidding. Uh I do want to talk about that, but I guess I'll talk about the Phillies. And what up, PJ? Oh, that's nice. PJ, we're getting shout outs. That's good, bud. Uh, Kevin, hello again. Sean, hello again. Oh, Sean, love that shirt on Farzi. Uh, for the people on the podcast, I'm wearing um, what I like to call my power blue shirt. Sorry, that wasn't my podcast voice. Here's my podcast voice. For the people on the podcast, I'm wearing what I like to call my power, power blue shirt. Thank you. With the two top buttons unbuttoned, of course, because, you know, for the ladies all right uh hey mickey diaz what's up buddy good morning everybody what the phillies are pulling off is nothing short of miraculous it's just a shame that the braves are just as hot maybe better uh how about a third sweep in a row i'm here for it hey just keep pace man just keep pace i i really don't like looking at standings until the team i'm following is at least 500 uh but why don't i just humor the good people like dan just so you guys, just so you guys don't have to look it up later in life, uh, I'll look it up for you right now. Uh, the Phillies right now, when it comes to, that's the NFL, you dumbass. Speaking to me, I'm the dumbass. Uh, wild card standings. Wild card standings right now. Phillies are two and a half games out of a wild card spot. Braves have won 8 of 10. Phillies have won 7 of 10. Braves have won 8 in a row. Phillies have won 7 in a row. So that's how that works, y'all. That's how that works, unfortunately. Uh, but when it comes to the NLE standing, of course, the Mets are just, what the hell, man. Uh, Mets have won 6 of their last 10. Uh, they are still 6.5 games up on the Braves in first place. Phillies 9 games out of first place. So that's where we're at right now as far as the standings go. But 2.5 games out of first place. I'll take it. Uh, oh, excuse me, out of a wild card spot, Miss Cousy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sean Gillespie, Farzi is way too hyper to be stoned. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Uh, Dan, there you go, a little espresso. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark's got to be shooting up espresso by now. I gotta say this, folks. Um, the espresso in uh, that France place I was at, Paris, I think it's called. Good. Like, I, here's, I, did I tell you guys this already? Like, people ask me because they know that I've been to Italy a handful of times, whatever. They, they're like, oh, would you like better? And, like, nothing for me will, like, and yes, I have a bias. And even if I spoke as much French as I speak Italian, which is not a lot, I would still go Italy. And I think the number one thing Italy has, I, I mentioned this. Yeah, I said this on the show, but. For those that miss it, the number one thing, like, Italy is much more, I think, geared towards Americans, like, our way of life. Like, we like to get coffee anywhere, anytime. <laughs> and, like, you walk down one block in Italy, and it's like, there's, like, two coffee shops, two cafes, uh, and they sell sandwiches and little things. Like, you could pop into a place, get an espresso, get a Americano, get a cappuccino, uh, pick up a sandwich, and you're on your way. France, it's all like, huh, sit down. Let us wow you, please. Just sit down. Then we will wow you. Like, no, I just want my coffee. I want a sandwich. And I want to be on my merry way. And the French, the French are like, no, let us make love to you as you have your sandwich. Like, no. It's a terrible French accent. But, uh, like, I, that's the thing. Like, the, but also in Paris, the espresso was not very good. The coffee wasn't very good. And just, Italy's great. I just, you know, everything's fighting for second place as far as I'm concerned. Uh, France, France was my sixth european country that i've been to and i would put it ireland was awesome i don't know everybody's fighting for second place basically i'll just say that amsterdam's great well netherlands great all right whatever enough of that i'll tell you what i'll go to paris again before i go to peru again <laughs> i'll go to france again before i go to peru all right there we go by the way, I saw a friend of the show, Jimmy Kemsky, posted a picture from, uh, I think, a Roman uh, train station. I think he's in Rome, and he saw a temple uh, temple uh, picture uh, advertisement. And he goes, oh, I'm surprised to see a temple advertisement. Hey, Temple Rome, babe. 
Temple Rome. We're global, okay? We're global university. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh Dan Schwartz speaking as the baseball that Bryce Harper hit. Ouch, my God. This is it. Just send me to heaven where I can see Mark Farzetta in a crisp blue shirt. Hey, this is heaven, babe. This is heaven. Um, Sean, hello again. Mally, Philly's going to cut out. Uh, Mally, it's funny. I actually had this thought. The Philly's got to cut out a piece of, uh, got to build a cutout of Joe Girardi. With uh, and then remove a piece of clothing down to a G string every time they win. I had that same thought, and Mally, like you, I probably also thought I'm a sick bastard. That's probably when that thought passed my mind. Because <laughs> I was also like, who wants to see Joe Girardi nude? I would say the Phillies. Here's the equivalent that I came to. Instead of that, Mally, in my Family Guy brain, I went to the next level, and I said, you know what? No. Hopefully, Joe left his binder behind, and each time they win. They rip a page off and they burn it. That's what they should do. That should be their major league reference. Um, ba -ba -ba. Mally's a doctor of cannabis. Oh, here comes the help for me passing out. Dan Schwartz, I'm in the medical field. I assess that the effects of perfect shirts on... <laughs> Dan, you're too kind. Uh, Freestone Farm CBD going to give Farzi uh, his own strain of CBD. Mike Fuji. My man, he liked the movie. Uh, what's John Cheeseburger got on here? Johnny, what's up, man? I think the Mets are going to met at some point. I, uh, I, How much fun? Oh, let's set that scene, John. Let's set this scene for a second here. The Perfect September by John Cheeseboro and Mark Farzetta. Earlier in the show, I said, wouldn't it be amazing if the Phillies were playing those meaningful games in September and jockeying for playoff position? The Eagles start their season. Jalen Hurts looks crisp. All the things are clicking. All the cylinders are firing. And everything looks amazing. And as the Phillies are continuously doing well, and the Eagles are starting off their season well, and we're watching these teams play well, wouldn't it be amazing if the Mets started to fall apart? Just imagine, for five months, the Mets are playing incredible baseball. And then the Phillies start to get hot. Like they are right now, seven wins in a row. And the Mets just <laughs> crash and burn. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh my God. Imagine why the joy of watching your Philly teams be great and the euphoria of watching a New York team plummet. Oh, how amazing would that be? The perfect September. Ah. Oh. Ah, everyone just 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 join in with me here for a second. Just bask in that for a second. Just let's just revel in that thought right now for just a second, okay? On uh on June 10th, okay, at 7:03 in the morning. And even if you're listening to the podcast later, if you're watching the show later, at this at this point in your life, before the before the Phillies play tonight, just for a second, think about that September where the Phillies are absolutely incredible. They're playing great. Eagles start off their season red hot. And as this is all happening, the New York Mets are crashing and burning. <sighs> you know, they say you shouldn't take joy in uh, your, uh, your enemy's uh, faults or uh, misfortunes. But to hell with that. I, I enjoy every second of it. <laughs> why, wouldn't, why wouldn't I? I spent all this time rooting for my team to be better than that team, and then my team finally is better than that team for whatever reason, and I'm not supposed to go, whoopee! What the hell? What's the point of living, folks? All right. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, but da -da 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 -da, Jim Grasmeter, what's up, buddy? Nice to see you. <laughs> Sean Gillespie, the Philadelphia in me has a very apt description, a uh, very apt description of talking to strangers. Sean, getting back to what D-Ray was saying about people just being nice and, like, talking to you, that's the thing that always uh, is shocking to me whenever I travel outside this corridor. When I was in Colorado a year ago, uh, fly fishing. Oh, God, that was amazing. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was out there, it's, it is just wild how open people are to conversation. And the first thought I have is, like, what I said. I'm like, what are you trying to sell me? It's a suspicious thing. 
we're not ta- we're not terrible people. We're just we we just don't have as much patience as other people. Like you go in line in Texas at a pharmacy, and I remember I was trying I was in a rush to get to a game, and I was just trying to buy a pair of black socks. I run in this pharmacy, there's a pair of black socks, and this woman and the cashier person. We're having this conversation. I'm like, I'm behind relatives. Great. Of all the lines in all the world, I got to get behind people that are relatives. No, they were total strangers because the woman behind the counter tried having the same conversation with me. And the minute you open your mouth, or you're this from the part of this country, they go, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, guys, I'm from an area that needs black socks. That's where I'm from. No, I'm kind. I'm nice. And I'm just, hell yeah, right. And there's a ring up. And let's go. Um. <clears throat> Wait, what's, why do you want me to tell someone to stand in the corner? Uh, skipping around here. <laughs> this is a great point, John. Uh, somebody said money can't buy happiness. I'd like to dispute that. Money buys bacon. Bacon brings happiness. Therefore, money buys happiness. I don't disagree, John. Uh, ba, 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 ba. John's confident in Maxi another year. Mickey Diaz, totally agree on the Maxi take, John. Upward progress from here on out uh, for that young man. Uh, John is saying that, yeah, he thinks Maxi took a st- step forward in year two, another step forward in year three. <laughs> starting to think John just, starting to think Dan just watches the show from the corner. Um, Canable is concerning. Pinned comment. That's a good thing, John. The Perfect September by Farzi and Cheese. <laughs> That's a show. Um... <laughs> Mally, Colorado Fly Fishing, a.k.a. Jack Daniels and his bong. For the record, I had Jack Daniels and a cigar while I was on the kayak out there in Colorado. Oh, see, okay, Mickey, that's one thing I won't do. I won't talk about, in, like, I'm not rooting for injury, but I understand your point. Thanks, everybody, in the chat. You guys are awesome. Much appreciated. Uh, not a heck of a lot of medical advice, though. Dan tried. Dan tried. But I appreciate you guys as per usual. Let's go into our morning rush. Brought to you by Sky Motor Cars, SkyMotorCars.com. Kyle Gibson gets to start for the Phillies tonight. He is 3-2 and two in the season with a 440 ERA. Zach Allen gets to start for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, four and one. So they're throwing a good pitcher at you tonight. Uh, he is a righty, four and one with a uh, two forty ERA. So slightly better than uh, Kyle Gibson's uh, four forty ERA. Here's what I'm looking forward to seeing tonight from the Phillies. Just bring it back home. Bring all the good vibes, all the good juju back home to South Philadelphia. Bryce Harper, let's get greedy. Keep on hitting bombs. I want to see. 450 feet home runs. I want to see, like, here's the thing. The Bryce Harper home run, there is no more wowing home run to me at Citizens Bank Park than a home run that goes into Ashburn Alley. Like, even more so than, like, Ryan Howard hitting over the McDonald's sign in right field, right, uh, uh, in the upper deck. More so than that is when you see a bomb hit to center field, and instead of seeing it ricochet off the brick wall, off the ivy there in the center field, off the the the, the aprovite trees, whatever the hell they got out there in center field, it's going over that wall. There is no more wowing, holy Lord moment than when they hit that ball over that center field wall. And I'm not talking about the 408, 408 sign. I'm talking about over the little shrubberies, over the bullpen, whatever, over the center field wall, the brick wall with the ivy. When that ball disappears over there, that's a, oh, my God, that pitcher should just retire. He should apologize to everyone on his team for throwing a, a spicy meatball right over there over the plate. That's what I want to see from Bryce Harper, because that's where that ball, that's what, what would it, what, that's what would have happened if Bryce Harper was hitting that ball that he hit yesterday in the uh, seventh inning. That's what would have happened. So I'm just rooting for that. That's, that, that, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, everybody. My name is Mark Farzetta. This is the Fire Z Show presented by Destination Retirement and DestinationRetirement.com presented by Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelers. Uh, this is a uh, Buzz Sports Entertainment production. Jim Hyden produced the program, did a phenomenal job as per usual. Great being back in this seat with you guys uh, after my return from the Euro trip. Be back full week of shows. Going to look forward to that. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. 
Let's hope the Phils keep it going. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. See ya.